Let's talk about Dr. Jill Stein and third parties and independents. Recently, Kyle Kalinske came out and I guess gave an endorsement to Jill Stein, which is fantastic. However, we have to be critical of everything. We've been through 2016 and 2020, and 2024 is no different. And joining me here to discuss it is none other than good friend of the show and colleague. Give it up for the man, the myth, the legend himself, Indy from Indy News Network. You know, you guys are doing some great stuff. And you talked to me about this article. And, you know, there's a few excerpts that I want to uh, read from it. But uh, first of all, Indy, how you doing, buddy? Uh, dude, I'm happy to be back. Thanks for inviting me. And I appreciate you sharing the article and and talking about it. I mean, it's kind of funny because I, I saw this thing the other day. Um, and I like like it says in there, I'm, I'm I am anti partisan. So like mm -hmm. uh, the fact that I just saw some people start to get excited about an endorsement from somebody that we've dismissed for three years mm -hmm. because he's got some kind of a name and following it kind of disappointed me. And, you know, as Reef would say, I got triggered. So I decided to write some things down and it started to pour out and grab some visuals. And next thing you know, I had an article to publish. So, mm -hmm. well, yeah. So, so let's, let's actually talk about it. Cause here, cause anyway, it's just one of you read just a few excerpts. I know there's a couple of the points you want to bring out here too, but let's start sure. off in the beginning. So yesterday, Jill Stein's campaign for president announced that pseudo celebrity podcasters and YouTube host Kyle Kalinske and his wife, Crystal Ball are endorsing the potential green party presidential nominee. And she is a nominee. There's, there's a process and lots of people are getting excited. Apologies to their fans and sickle fans, but I'm going to throw a deluge of water on that excitement coming from a fire hose of reality and past behavior. None of the above. Let's get this out of the way up front. Right now, I am straight up anti-partisan, not simply non-partisan. I am team none of the above for 2024 and lows all the candidates. Uh, I don't now think that's, we are that's my favorite. That's my favorite gift, by the way. That Richard Pryor <laughs> gift is from Brewster's Millions. All right. He literally ran a campaign for the city he was living in. It might even been Chicago, you know, because the mayoral candidates were so bad. He had a bunch of money he had to spend and not have anything to show for it. So he created a, an ad campaign to vote for none of the above. So I use that all the time. And, you know, and, you know, we got we got to be playing more of it because hey, it's one thing to see a gif. It's another thing altogether to see the full context of everything, too. So uh, you go on to write. I don't think we are voting our way out of this mess. No candidate will be able to withstand the power of the corporate military intelligence apparatus. They can only play with it. I think all this is a distraction. We will likely end up with controversial statement in a three, two, one. Donald Trump as president come January. That's not an endorsement. It's merely a prediction. I, too, have said that as well. Being on Team None of the Above allows me to be highly critical of all of the 2024 presidential candidates. Donnie, Tony Hans, Trump, Genocide Joe, Biden, Marianne, Orb Queen Williamson. I don't think, even think she's relevant anymore. RFK, Bobby, Kennedy Jr. Booby. 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 There you go. We got uh, Cornell, Curtis Mayfield, West, Jill Stein, Lars Mapstead. Again, Lars hasn't secured the Libertarian nomination, and Claudia De La Cruz and the rest who are uh, who are all running to be perceived by many as the biggest monster in the world. Uh, we're all losing no matter who wins. So when you okay, so elaborate a little bit. Like what what is what has caused you to really just turn away from third parties and independents? Because obviously this is, I've I've said on the show too that this is going to be my last election cycle to vote. You know, and and it's and I say this was a heavy heart because I've had a lot of I. I guess maybe I was being too idealistic for third parties and independents. I know in 2016, there was a major opportunity for the Greens, Libertarians and other non-affiliate parties to, you know, really capitalize on the anger of that of that election cycle. And, you know, there there seemed to be something happening and then it fizzled away. And now here we are in 2024. And while I am impressed that the third parties are getting as much media coverage as they are, um, there was so much more that they could have done to shore up their infrastructure to actually have a have a solid campaign plan. And I just think it's just like they're gunning it and they're shooting from the hip. But explain why none of these people, at least from from what you have written about, why they are just irrelevant or either that we're going to lose no matter what. Well, we're going to go lesser of all evils again. Jill Stein was terrible on COVID. Terrible. Look into her record. People may agree or disagree. She was for lockdown. She was for all the the, the science, quote unquote, which has been in, in question. Safe and effective. Thank you, YouTube. Um, now, that that is my biggest criticism of her 
uh, personally, but every single one of these candidates is deeply flawed. Um, the three one, the three that are in the lead right now all have some kind of a brain issue. I saw somebody talk about that yesterday. Uh, as far as as far as look, the libertarians can't even figure out who they are. You've got the Mises caucus, you've got the anti-war caucus, you've got the Spike Jones caucus, and then you've got the Larry Sharp people. Okay. You've got, they're completely divided amongst themselves. They can't get their stuff together. The Green right. Party completely blew out their infrastructure after 2016 and then went neo-lib with Howie Hawkins and he was AOC light for 2020. I voted for him and I was embarrassed to, but I certainly wasn't going to vote for the other two monsters. Uh, when it came to 2024, I mean, the only way, look, Yard Rock 2024, thanks Lee Camp, uh, because that honestly is the only one that is not... You know, uh, that, that uh, one of the ma he, he said yesterday, one of the only major candidates that doesn't have a brain issue. Um, <laughs> well, brutal, I, I, brutal. I, I think overall, like there's a, it, it, it is rather embarrassing to see this kind of lineup. And um, perhaps maybe my standards have been really, I guess, maybe too high for third parties to really uh, meet. I've been look, we've been covering them since 2017. And while it's not connected to the article, I mean, but it does say something about the Green Party. You know, you mm -hmm. have the Illinois Green Party and the Indiana Green Party. And when we were on radio, TV, just getting started, you know, the this was after of 2016, you know, we went to a couple of green party events, myself and my colleague, Daniel Lupker to interview the candidates, interview the greens. And, you know, originally these were large venue areas, but as time progressed on less people showed up, venues got smaller and smaller and smaller until I just remember when Daniel just said, Hey kid, we're wasting our time showing up here. Nothing is going to happen. And nothing ever really did. And then we would look at the libertarians, well, not connected to this article, because I want to go right back to Jill Stein. You know, uh, I am impressed that they're able to get ballot access, which is not an easy feat to do. I was even impressed with what they were able to pull off in Illinois during the 2022 midterm election cycle. But with the potential of Trump and RFK Jr. both being at the Libertarian Convention on May 25th, and uh, the possibility, however unlikely, of a debate happening, and they don't even have their own nominee yet picked, I mean, it really says a lot, and if the Libertarians can't even get their act together. So with Jill Stein getting this, I guess, endorsement from Kyle Kalinske and, uh, to, to an extent, Crystal Ball, um, how, 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 how do you see this happening? I mean, do you just see this as, a, as just another way to just maybe rebuild people's credibility? Because let's face it, so much happened during, this, uh, during these four years under Biden to where people who we thought were our champions and defenders – the great reveal uh, took place during these four years to where there's hardly anything left of the progressive movement that happened from 2016 through 2020. Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, I, I wrote about it in the piece, but what I think this is, first of all, I don't think it's even an actual endorsement. If you go back to the article mm -hmm. and, and I break down exactly why I don't think it was an endorsement. I think it was a happy birthday message where he says she has my support. And then he tries to make a case for why she is the anti-war candidate who is the only the only one on the ballot, which I also agree with. That doesn't mean that he's voting for her. Mm -hmm. He never says, I'm going to vote for her. Okay? And then yeah. how it's rolled out is the other thing, is that it's clipped from that Zoom stream. It's put out to her Twitter. It's not on the campaign's website. And they could be slow to get that up. I understand. That happens. But an endorsement like that with a million follower YouTuber, they didn't, run, they didn't slow it down on Jeffrey Sachs. All right. right. Also, that Kyle hasn't reacted. He has uh, not responded to this. Also, yeah, Kyle has not even retweeted, nor has he mentioned it on his Twitter account. Now called X. That's right, folks. Twitter just uh, changed their URL. Now it's no longer Twitter. It's X. It's a terrible name. They should have called it Phoenix. But so 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 we know that Kyle has had a history of smearing and slandering third parties. Um do you think there's been any kind of communication between Jill Stein? Because obviously, and I, I say this because, you know, we, we saw how Marianne Williamson was so close to Kyle and Crystal. We saw how they were, like, she basically, basically, she did, she did officiate their wedding. Yes. That's and, in there. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Take it away, man. I don't, I don't mean to. No, also, look, no, she was guest on the show this week on Crystal Kyle and friends. That was part of the reason why he recorded the birthday message was that she was coming in it was a um you know a pro-palestine zoom call for her supporters 
where he record pre-recorded a message. It wasn't even live where he said this, this nice thing. He made a case for her certainly and indicated that he might support her. Didn't say he was voting for her. She's not even the nominee yet. She's the presumptive nominee. I don't really know of anyone significantly challenging her right now. Um, but I think that this whole thing is a torpedo shepherd or misdirection operation coming from somebody much higher up that is a funder and somebody that is a little bit more sinister and is looking to hamstring the Greens. An endorsement from a progressive Democrat show, is that going to help the Green Party? Well, some people think it might. Some people think it's going to bring progressive Democrats into the Green Party and try to turn it into Democrats. You know, there there has been this talk of, OK, well, why is the Green Party still around? Because, look, I, I again, every every I'm going to be critical of all parties, including independents, Greens and Libertarians, too. And I, I say this because it, to all the people who are running in the Green Party, it is important that you hear these criticism. That is. And this is something that's been it been captured, you know, been been growing a little bit, too. And maybe you could help elaborate more on it. But. Why is the Green Party still around? Is it just there to serve as a distraction or is it that she put people into the Democratic Party again? Why has it been the Green Party been tolerated? Same thing for all these political parties, unless it's a way for just to rake in money or make people feel bad and then push them right back into the Democratic Party. Because if we're looking at a real third party, the momentum that was there in 2016, and I return back to that year because there was so much disdain. We we had a united left movement, I could say, after 2016. People were at least on the same wavelengths, the absolute disdain for the Democratic Party. Uh, people wanted to break away from it. They, they were looking for something brand new, and there was lightning in the bottle. And similar to Bernie Sanders not taking advantage because, but let's face it, he was a cuck. The Greens also failed to take advantage and let the lightning out of the bottle. What what are, what are your thoughts on that? Um, it's it, it's a mess. Um, yeah. I, I I agree with you a hundred percent. I mean, so it's, no, 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 go, go, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say let's let, let's go back and and take a look at some of the stuff I laid out here. Again, some of the cases I made. You know why they're they're not going to risk their YouTube shows over an endorsement for somebody that is struggling to maybe get 5% of the vote. Maybe. You know, I, and I want to pull that up. I'm glad you brought that up here because let's talk about it. When, and, I, and I'm preparing for this too. When, because Jake said, hey, I, I like RFK Jr. Yeah, right. And then there's also the fact of, uh, you know, Kyle supposedly giving this endorsement to the Greens, there's a statement right here that you wrote. Just wait until corporate-funded uh, independent media starts digging into the Green Party's inner workings. It's not going to be pretty how they present it. You'll likely hear terms of highly dysfunctional from the left and hyper-woke from the right. And if you're putting out this prediction, and I know this prediction all too well, or Kyle or Crystal or anyone anyone in, in, in the larger independent media that is connected to the Democratic Party, hey, look, guys, we... We, we understand that you don't like the Democrats, but we got to stop Trump and we and we can't vote third party. And you write that in the article. Um, let's 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 hear some of your reasonings on this, because I, I do see this happening. But let's let's talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's exactly what I see. Have. This is this is the operation that I see happening. They're going to come in. They're going to get support. They're going to bring all their people into it and get very excited about the potential that's happening and then pull the rug out. It's Lucy in the football guys. We. Look, we really gave it a shot. I like these people. I like Jill. The Green Party's got no structure behind them. Look, even if she gets in, they're going to fight her 100%. Congress will stand up just like they stood up against Obama. You remember what the Republicans did to Obama? Imagine if the Republicans and Democrats all did that together, because that's what they do to a Green Party candidate. Hey, and that's hey, the argument hey. they're going to make. I'm not no. making that candidate. They no. are. Now, wait a minute. You're making a controversial statement there, and you're telling me that the Democratic and Republican establishment can work together? <laughs> to, infiltrate, to infiltrate and undermine a third party and make sure the duopoly continues untouched? Nah. Why would I think that? <laughs> Well, let's let's but let's talk about evolution and political evolution. You know, let's let's hear it from the dime store Eminem himself and Big Mad Crab. Shout out to you. Matter of fact, shout out to the whole crew of Indie News. Um, here's Kyle's evolution. Let's play this just for a little bit. Biden and Marianne. Just Biden and Marianne. 
So that is what you want. You don't want four or five other candidates who are nominally to Biden's left running because then you split all those votes among those five candidates. It's math. Actually, I'm not as strong as Kyle in yeah, terms of I'm the intentions on more the student of a Biden loan than she right? is, for sure. And she gets accused of being a bigger one than me, but that's but, a side point. So again, I want to wish Jill... Oh, isn't that sweet? She's a pride and bro. Uh, a very, very happy birthday. I want her to know that one. she has my support. I think she's very brave for running uh, in this environment, in this climate. And look, bottom line is... There is one candidate in this race who is both on the ballot and anti-war. Ah, oh, there he is. It's, I, by the way, the way this is paused, Kyle's just like looking down and Crystal's just looking at him. It's just sort of like, yeah, I'm in trouble. Or either that, she's she's telling him if he, if, if, if he behaves himself like in another juice box or something of that nature. What? Okay, no, maybe you should let him turn his hair back because, you know, he's been Pete Davidson for almost two years now. What the hell? I, old, old school Kyle would be furious at this new evolution. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is Kyle Kalinske or not, or he's or that. Well, no, look, he's he's saying the right words. Everything he said, I agree with. I will tell you 100 percent. He's saying the right words now. OK, what's he going to be saying October 31st, is he still going to be backing Jill Stein and giving his full-throated endorsement saying, fuck the Democrats and fuck the Republicans? I don't care if Trump ends up president because that's not on me? Because that's no. what needs to happen. See, now, he, he, here's 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 why I'm I'm really, like, again, in, in full agreement of, of this, of, of especially how, how you've been writing this article and or how you wrote this article and everything else. Look, I don't care if Trump wins or not, okay? I mean, I remember and I predict this, and Daniel, my colleague, he predicted this too on our show after the election of 2020. We said that Donald Trump was going to come back and that the Democrats are going to try everything they can to censor and silence him, and that didn't work, folks. That didn't work at all, period. So when we look at uh, you know, Biden versus Trump, Trump already, unlike the Democrats, he kept his political movement together, and I don't want to fall. I don't want anyone to fall in for that trap of fear. I mean, it doesn't matter if Trump wins the presidency or not. The world will still continue on. But what I care about is consistency and being authentic, not only to your audience, but to this political landscape that we have here. And look, I, I'm going to vote independent. I don't know which of the third party can't. It's not going to be RFK. You know, definitely not. But, you know, I haven't decided which of the other third party candidates I'm going to support or, or vote for. I mean, that's going to be a big question mark for me. But when you have people put in this fear tactic of, oh, if you don't vote for Biden or the Democrats, you're going to help out Trump. Trump is already getting enough help from the Democratic Party. You want to know who's helped Trump out the most? All these vote blue, no matter who, sickle fans and everyone else that has Trump derangement syndrome. Who made who made Trump's mugshot popular? Not yet to an extent Trump, but who was sharing it and boosting it? A lot of latte drinking liberals and, of course, Trump supporters. So Trump was able to capitalize on anything that Trump does. He knows how to manipulate the media. And I think mm -hmm. there's there's so many brain dead sickle fans out there that don't really understand the game. If you don't talk about Trump, he doesn't have his power. If you don't talk about him, he's deceived. The worst thing you could ever do to somebody is never talk about them or talk to them. And it's it is uh, I'm, I'm just I'm preparing for the the attacks that not only you will get, but hard lens media, we're going to get to because, Oh, you guys want to tell your audience that's okay. Not to vote. And yeah, it is okay. Not to vote. I've been seeing in the chat already. And I'm pretty sure you saw it in your chat here and there where people saying, I'm not going to vote. I, I, I would encourage people to vote their party. And if you live in a citizen ballot initiative state, do that, but don't fall for the fear of vote blue, no matter who do you, do you think it's still going to resonate or you think just people are just turned off by, by elections because it's, it's one thing for us to talk about it. But the engagement and enthusiasm, what, what have you noticed? A hundred million Americans already don't vote. <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> All right. Um, now, maybe not as many. Now, they're going to try to play around with the, the mail-in balloting. You know, I, I have questions and always have over the, the um, accuracy, efficacy, and uh, maneuverability, vulnerability of the machines and the software behind the machines. You know, they say they weren't connected to the Internet. They're connected to the Internet. They say that a USB stick can't fix it. USB stick can give it a virus and make it flip votes or do whatever you want to do. And on top of the fact that you've got poll workers that have no idea what the hell they're doing with the machines on top of it, using an 80-year-old uh, using an iPad they don't know how to use, 
for two days of a day and a half of training. There's almost no training for the poll workers. This is how our elections are administered. Oh, yeah. And it's different in every town, every state, every every county, every municipality. It all changes. It's how they rig even how they make the ballots look and where candidates appear on which line and how that looks is a complete rig job. There are so many different ways that we are manipulated into voting for the duopoly. You and I arguing about this is not going to make a difference. Jill Stein running for president, honestly, I wish well, it would make a difference. But well, she's not. Well, we're we're fighting well, for five percent. We're well, fighting I, to get to five percent. Yeah, I, I we're not clear. winning. Yeah, well, I, I want to be clear. I don't. I don't think you and I are arguing about. I mean, I think we're in. We're in no, no. I, 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 no, no. I, I'm wrong. Wrong. You know, I, we're just arguing with the world together. Okay. I mean, you and I together are arguing. Okay. Sorry. All right. All right. Yeah. No. Sorry. I must have misheard that. Then uh, it's, in harmony. Good. Yeah. So, you know. I, I I was wondering about how to prepare for this election cycle, especially when we left 2023 going into 2024 and really what's there to be excited about. And let's face it, so much is, uh, you know, is being presented before us on social media. You have the crisis in Gaza. You have the economic crisis. You have our politicians acting like children in Congress. And yes, folks. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later on the show between MTG and AOC, but less on that. But overall, the future of independent media, too, because we see the censorship. We see how people are being suppressed. I know INN has been hit hard by the Jack Buddha censorship, but there's mm -hmm. another aspect here that, that you brought up, and, and that is how social media works. And for everyone that's uh, been following us, if you haven't heard of Social Blade, Social Blade is where you can find out the status or situation of your favorite content creator, be they on YouTube, Twitch, you know, any of the social media platforms. And, you know, hey, Social Blade is 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 a way you could even compare yourself to uh, other other larger channels, too. And you bring this up here. You bring up Social Blade. How does endorsing Stein benefit Crystal and Kyle financially? Could it hurt? Simply put, they don't keep making big money with their podcast backing loser losing horses like Marianne Williamson, right? They are not going to risk taking uh, tanking their livelihoods over a political endorsement of a third-party candidate when their base is entrenched into duopoly. Both Crystal and Kyle have YouTube channels with over 1 million subscribers. Okay, hey, not an easy feat to do. And the algorithm is friendly to their content you know, because they're grandfathered in, allowing them to gain new subscribers. See Social Blade for more on this. And I encourage all of you to check out Social Blade, especially if you're going to be being a content creator you, you'll need to use it and be familiar with it. The Crystal Kyle and Friends podcast is doing well with 46,000 free and in between 1,000 to 20,000 monthly paid subscribers just on Substack alone. Two years ago, Breaking Points had more than 40,000 paid monthly subscribers. They gained 10,000 paid subscribers in the first two days. Uh, that was when they had about 600K subs on YouTube. So I'm guessing they doubled their monthly uh, paid subscribers in parallel. Uh, Kyle's podcast, The Kyle Kalinske Show, has another 2,600 paid subscribers on Patreon as of this publishing. So let's let's talk a little bit about the social blade and the boost. What This is only kind of temporary, though, because it's one thing to say, hey, uh, I support Jill Stein, but then what happens afterwards? So let's talk a little bit about the metrics on social blade, getting clicks and the views. It's, it's part of the show business, folks, and that's, that's how it is on all media landscapes. So take it away, Indy. Yeah, I mean, they're all measuring themselves. And what they're doing is YouTube is effectively driving that with their search algorithm. And they're telling people in keyword searches using tools like vidIQ or TubeBuddy or tools like Social Blade, what keywords are trending at the moment. Also using the keywords on, on Twitter, trying to ingrain those into their, their subject matter. And this is what all of the experts that tell you how to grow a YouTube channel say. Don't actually start with the content you want to make. Start by searching YouTube to see what people are actually looking for and then make that. But mm -hmm. we all know that YouTube is reverse engineering what they want people to look for. So mm -hmm. don't do that. Make the content you want to make. And that's why we get suppressed in a lot of cases because YouTube does not want that those kinds of keywords to be prominent. They don't want people searching them. Yeah, that's know. what's happening here. And there's and there's a lot of stories that I feel that should be getting uh, you know attention, like what's happening to David McBride or uh, that guy who snowed in somewhere on the Asian continent, or first name Julian, last name A, 
or talking about how other whistleblowers and journalists are being silenced or, or suppressed or being taken out. I think that's the safest way to say that on social media. But that's mm -hmm. this, this this is this is the world that we live in. This is the system that we have. And unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of stories that should be getting attention are dismissed. And I, a part of me gets a little sad. I was like, yeah, this is one hell of a story to talk about. And I know you guys at Indie News have been hit. Um, so going forward from here, uh, especially uh, when you look at this article and everything else, um, if you had a chance to speak to Jill Stein, let's say Jill Stein showed up on INN, you know, what, what would you say to her? Because there, there's so much I want to say to her as well. Like, Hey, you know, when you had Cornell West on, and I noticed that she's kind of giving her criticism to Cornell West and he should be getting all that criticism, you know, why didn't the greens become more organized or centralized? Like, why don't you guys have your nominee pick? It almost seems like she was a reluctant pick at best. You know, what, what would you be saying to her? Well, we have a policy at INN where we don't interview candidates who are running for office. So I wouldn't in that case, um, I would certainly, you know, ask her, A, what do you plan to do if, you, God forbid, you ever did get there? And we all know that that's beyond a reality in, in this environment with the way that media brainwashes people right now and the way that most people are plugged into Netflix, Hulu, corporate media, sports and everything else. We have to look at the reality of the world we live in. Most people aren't watching YouTube shows. I wish they were like Hard Lens Media. We have 500 people or so watching right now. And that's awesome. And we get a couple thousand views in the grand scheme. And we have to look at it, There was an article written by Chris Legion, INN, INN's Chris Legion, about 15 months ago. And it was it was titled Why I Left the Left, even though it really wasn't about why I left the left. It's really why corporate media has completely beaten the rest of the majority of people into not even realizing how badly they're propagandized all day long. Sponsored by Pfizer, by the way. Um, Man, you, you know, and go ahead, go ahead. I mean, to cut you off. Go it's, ahead. it's scary. It's sad. And and um, everybody around me seems to not be awake. Um, nobody really wants to talk about the genocide in my real in my real life. Um, this is something that is an online thing where I found community, but in a lot of cases, the people around me are not really talking about this and don't want to talk about this. Corporate media, other than CNN, has been avoiding talking about this like crazy or doing it to try to promote Israel only and completely whitewash what's happening to the Palestinian people, ignoring what's happening at the ICJ, ignoring what's happening at the United Nations. They're just not reporting on it. And I don't think that they're going to give Jill Stein the kind of sunlight that she needs. Look at what they're doing to try to smear and uh, Bobby Kennedy. He's at 15%, maybe nationally in some polls. I don't believe any of the polls even. I have no idea what anybody is actually thinking and voting. And I don't know if the polls, if the actual vote reflects what anybody's voting anyway. I think the people over on the Rumble audience would certainly agree with that. So, um, okay, well... No, 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 because 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 you are bringing up uh, some some things I want to like talk about further on, and that is overall what is the general feel of the American people? Like I, I, the people I've been speaking to, at least in my social group in real life, and yes, even online as well. You know, I, I see even in my Discord community too. You know, are people engaged or excited about this election cycle? No, not not really. And and those who have been liberal or Democrat uh, aligned. I've said to me, gee, Kit, you know, a, a few years ago, I would have said, you know, you're, you're crazy for supporting third parties or independents or not even caring about an election cycle. And now I understand how you feel. And there are so many of my friends, uh, people I went to college with or, you know, people I knew, like, since my childhood, be like, I, like, I'm I'm totally turned. How, how do you deal with it? It's so, so like, welcome. Welcome to my inner space. This is, this is what I've been dealing with for years. Welcome, everybody. It's okay to cry. Well, we'll hug it out. But so many people are just are just not engaged or either that they, they they say they'll vote another way, but push comes to shove, you know, so many people are just not interested. And while this is like a little blip on the radar, and I do wish Dr. Jill signed the best. And look, uh, to be clear here, here's here's what I want to see happen. And I'm going to include everyone. Let's say Lars Mapstead gets the Libertarian nomination. 
let's say Jill gets a nomination, all right? And let's say Cornell West and RFK Jr. are successful too with getting ballot access, whatever. Ideally, I would like to see each of those candidates secure at least one electoral college vote or either that uh, enough to where one of these independent candidates get maybe one or two. Now, that's a that's a tall order. I, I don't see that happening. Maybe it can happen. Maybe it won't. We shall see. But, I mean, that's the only caveat I could take away. And my reasoning for this is because I, I want to put a fire uh, in, 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 in the souls of so many Americans who are disengaged by politics because it will give us a chance to see how Congress will select the president. It will be something that we haven't seen in such a long time. Now, that is, a, again, an idealistic perspective, hope in one hand, crap in the other, see, what, see which one fills out the most. Um, but that's what I want to see. I, I want to see this disengagement, but voter enthusiasm is key. And of course, propaganda and fear always gets the better of people when you see, um, you know, larger content creators do the fear of if you don't support Biden, we're going to get Trump. And that that works on people, unfortunately. And I hope that we're, we're not in the same position we were in 2020 as we are now in 2024, but that'll be yet to be seen. But yeah, but they're going to vote yeah. shame people also to say, well, you have to vote. You have to vote if you're going to vote. I mean, you're not just going to not vote. Mm -hmm. 100 million people don't vote already, folks. This is yeah. not like a me problem. This is a messaging and inspiration problem. Part of it is that they haven't made voting day a national holiday and that a lot of people still have to work and that they've closed a lot of the polling places to make the lines intentionally long in areas that are going to vote for certain candidates that they don't really want elected. We've seen all that monkey business happening. Everybody has a really short memory to 2020, it appears. You know, yeah. yeah. God damn. Why'd you have to bring that up, dude? Because you, you, you bring up the fact that people have forgotten and I've, I've and I call it the blurring effect. Okay. We, we we just forget things that happened years ago. I mean, look, folks, just a quick reminder, not related to the article, but how many of you remember that our own United States Congress had a couple of sessions in regards to the existence of extraterrestrial life, the U.S. government interacting with extraterrestrials, extraterrestrials being aggressive, UFOs. How many people still remember that? Like, that's a thing that happened. If that was talked about in the 90s, Everybody would be losing their mind. Every That would be fresh. Like, wow, if we had that amount of conversation taking place. Now on the internet, it's like, eh, whatever. What's new? What's new? And same thing with politics. People forget. People forget. And I noticed that there's a lot of people who put on these rose-colored glasses thinking, well, it was better under Trump. But they're both one and the same. Trump and Biden, nothing fundamentally changed at all. And the, uh, Anyways, uh, rant, rant over. Take it away, Indy. <laughs> Uh, you know, again, I've got a little bit more in the article that kind of talks about a little bit of this stuff, but also the Princeton study. Let's go back to the Princeton study that talks about how much the poor and the bottom 90 percent have influence over our national electoral discussion and policy. Mm -hmm. The answer is zero. So what are we doing here? We have to abolish the donor class effectively. We have to get rid of rigging and purchasing our elections by corporations and by wealthy people and by super PACs. Jill Stein going to get rid of all of that in with one fell swoop by getting elected by not getting elected with 5% of the vote. Maybe. I mean, what are we doing here? I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I told you, I'm going to douse you. I'm going to deluge you with a fucking fire hose of reality. I, I would say my, my, my only counter to this is what I want to see happen is at least the third parties, the independents, you know, get the recognition vote, get federally funded, you know, get, get you know, at least, at least the, the idea. And again, tall order. This is me being idealistic here, uh, securing enough votes to be recognized federally and also each of them to win an electoral college vote. Now that, that is a tall order. I don't see any of these third party candidates securing the office of presidency. That's not going to happen. It's either going to be Trump or Biden. Um, but that's, that's what I want to see. And what, what I would hope is that would inspire people to be more actively involved in politics or it just causes more resentment towards third parties, give or take. I mean, it's it, it is it is um, it gets a flip of a coin in, in in how people will view uh, November on election night, especially when you're going to have Biden versus Trump, and that's going to be the main front and center thing to talk about. But what 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 is happening here is I think people trying to 
desperately make something exist when it can't exist anymore. And I think it's just the idea and the ever hope of trying to recreate something that we saw in 2016. And it can't be done again. The Bernie, the Bernie movement is dead. Bernie sold out. The people behind him completely splintered. Some went corporate. Some went Democrat or, you know, like progressive Democrat that are still corporate. And it took him six months to finally recognize, oh, Biden is funding bombing people every day. That's probably a bad thing. And we shouldn't support that anymore. Even though they browbeat and voter shame people into, but Trump, but Trump. Look, now, look, Trump would be no better when it comes to Israel, and I'm the first one to recognize that. Like I said, they're all monsters. We are not winning. We have no choice when it comes to this. All right? The, there are so few in our world, even if everybody in our world, in, in the left independent space, voted for Jill Stein and got behind her and told everybody in our audience to vote for her, what is that, 5 million votes? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Yeah. Maybe? Possibly. Yeah, that's that is that is uh you're being ever hopeful. I think you're being way too kind there. <laughs> okay. But there's there's something else. Let's I look at how big our space really is. Well, I mean, for 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 the progressive. I mean, at, at this point, I don't even know if we even have anything close to that, that that kind of numbers because so many people got disengaged. I mean, the left cannibalized itself. The left destroyed itself because you have the infiltration of the democrats and neoliberals and of course just people who didn't say who who never even believed what they were protesting about you may I, again my, my criticism towards a lot of these activists and organizers from 2016 through 2020 you know i remember all of them i said this before rallying up downtown chicago going into that area and then protesting in front of trump tower and similar was covering the green party this was me saying this to daniel though i said hey dan I'm done wasting my time here. They're all all what they're doing is protest in front of Trump Tower. I'm tired of it. I just I just can't do it anymore. And that's that's really how I feel. Like uh, overall, like whatever re remained of the movement from 2016 and to some extent 2020 uh, has evaporated away because I think people realized it wasn't going to go anywhere. And those that we trusted weren't fighters. I want to pull up this thing from Roger Meadows, good friend of the show. Uh, every four years, Greens run the presidential candidate, then disappear. For three years just to pop up a year before the presidential election that's a problem going for the top position we let them t uh, walk off the court and not challenge them so here's my challenge since the evidence exists uh, that they have proven over and over again but they can't get nominees statewide ballots then i say challenge them to do the same citizen ballot initiative amendments remember they always get their nominee on the statewide ballot in 48 states right so they already showed their hand that they can do this. They've been here for two decades. We pushed them to get their platform on the ballot as amendments in all 17 states that allowed them and, and statutes in other, the other six. In 2026, if they, do not, uh, if, if they do not, then don't come ask for our help in 2028. That's a fair enough response, Roger, if we can get the Greens to actually do their stuff for ballot initiatives. I know uh, some of the libertarians I spoke to who, uh, let's like, say, for example, Larry Sharp in New York State for worker co-ops or public banks, you know, I mean, that's that's a concept. Hey, put, put that on the ballot. Put that on the ballot or, or use that fight to make your state a ballot initiative state. Um, and that's and it's another criticism of the Greens. You guys disappear and then come back for the presidential election cycle. You disappear. And then you come back every four years. Hey, thanks for the cigarettes and milk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have to give a little bit of credit. Well, not even credit, but at least look, they got decimated after 2020 because the Howie Hawkins neo-lib takeover, oh, yeah. or, you know, sock, sock them takeover of the party left them without any kind of infrastructure, which they have been working to rebuild for the last two or three years. And they are a, a member paid only uh, organization that does not take any corporate funding. I, I'm not anti-green. The problem is, is that this environment will never allow them to rise to the level of a corporate powered party while we have Citizens United, while we have unlimited billionaires being able to buy their own elections. The No Labels Party was about to go right past them and they didn't even exist before 2020. Now they shut down and you had Andrew Yang trying to start a party and oh, all yeah, these the other, forward, it's, yeah, all the party. it's all distractions. It's all distractions. We need I to look. 
Uh, my answer is, is the, we're not voting our way out of this. This entire system needs to be dismantled the way that it is. Capitalism is obviously the problem and the root of all of this that nobody wants to really address and figure out. How do we fix this? How is it that 95% of the country is struggling to make ends meet while the other 5% thinks everything is just fine and dandy financially? Mm-hmm. You Go know, back to the article. You can see it right, right at the end. I talk about yeah, that a little bit. I actually want to actually pull that up here as, as like a final note to this. So constant vigilance, head on a swivel. Who the hell says that? And skeptical of everything and everyone, as you should be. Head on a swivel. Where'd you learn that from, Andy? Who, who taught you that? It is nice to have hope where it is uh, warranted. But the establishment is very keen on preying upon that hope to keep you engaged with their inflated personalities that mostly toe the line, follows the orders. We must continue to be vigilant to look out for this nonsense, especially in an election year where the Democratic candidate they endorsed in 2020 and would uh, normally be pushing is weak, uh, abetting uh, ethnic cleansing uh, in Gaza and overseeing an economy uh, that the top 5% of income earners think is great. It's just great. But the bottom 95% see is squeezing them way more than it did under the last guy who is already decidedly terrible and they have fear mongered against. The goal and motivation for people like Reed Hoffman is to suggest that it's okay to not back Biden right now and instead steer progressive energy into a campaign the Democrats plan in every way to torpedo from the inside out. Once the election is over, the Democrats will challenge the authenticity of their votes in court in any case where a green vote made a difference. Again, apologies to anyone who reads this and gets upset. I've seen this soap opera a few times already, and I'm tired of it. The third party candidates are selling hope to an audience desperate for it. That is true to an extent, uh, but they offer no real path to victory, nor a roadmap to deal with the nonsense once or rather if they step foot in the White House. A website with policies on a page is great, but they are just rhetoric and theoretical. They don't deal with real world challenges and sabotage that the Democrats and Republicans would assuredly apply. Let's see how this plays out. Oh, Jesus, man, you gave a gut check to there. So what what is your. What is your response to some of the criticism that you have gotten from this article? Because, look, I, I've read it. You even gave me a heads up, like a preview uh, yesterday. And, you know, it's made me reflect how I've even talked to third parties and independents. Um, and I do want to hold out for that audacity of hope. And, you know, I have my idealistic version of ending of the selection cycle November where the independents get electoral college votes. That would be a sight to see. But I have to know better. And I you know, look, the reality is the Democrats and Republicans are going to get most of the votes or use it at suppress anything from third parties or independents. So what is what is your response to people who have been critical of this article or saying, oh, how dare you be mean to Jill Stein? Shouldn't you be more open minded? First. And that's the other thing I would say, if you heard those, I tried to play some sound bits, but I don't know if that's working. But it was don't be rude first. <laughs> it was Trump going, don't be rude. And we're fucked, you know. Um, no matter what, I, I wish it were the case. Look, I, I'm not here to blow sunshine and smoke and daisies. Um, it's hunker down. It's figure out how you can manage and survive while we can. Because World War III's on its way, if not here already. They see We see the censorship that's squeezing us more than ever. Um you know, again, it's it's not about fear. It's about how do we arm ourselves and and strengthen ourselves so that when they try to do the clampdowns against our protests, against dissent, that we are prepared and have backups prepared to be able to continue to communicate, to operate, and to share our messaging out there. Because mm -hmm. communication with every look, I felt completely alone until 2020. I didn't find anybody that shared my views with me. Mm -hmm. It was the internet. And all of these communities that helped me realize that I wasn't alone in, in, in those views. I wasn't completely crazy and that there were other people that felt the same way. And that emboldened me. That made me feel a lot better that, hey, I'm not alone. Let's let's do this together. God, mm -hmm. you know, thank goodness for for Indie News Network and, and for, for my family out there. You know, shout out to Reef who fixed my audio literally before I came on. I, I couldn't hear in my earphones. And, you know, we've got technical challenges and. And we all pick each other up. We help each other and, and we support each other. I've been all about mutual aid and, and acting locally. Get involved with your school board. Run for local council like our friend Amber Amber uh, King is running for in, in uh, the Seattle area. 
And uh, I, from from Roar Media. And I also right? want to give a shout out to a good friend of the show, Angel Rivera. Hey, Angel writes this: Indy and INN saved my life and honestly gave me purpose. Thank you. Well, first I love of that all, dude. Well, first of all, like again, you know, because you know, Indy, I'm going to be clipping this and I'm going to be sharing this with our Can TV audience too. But look, um. Because this is a conversation we do have to have, the criticism of Jill Stein, the criticism of these larger podcasts endorsing third parties and then or either that giving a semi endorsement, then telling us to vote Democrat. But, you know, when we when we when we do this kind of work, when we do this kind of commentary, you know, I've I've seen this rodeo play before and I've seen all these activists and organizers who are against Trump. I've seen, I've seen this play. I've seen the story happen, but there's been no real talk about doing any kind of real fundamental change and in order to do that it means you have to fight those that even you might respect okay and that means mm -hmm. fighting democrats fighting republicans and yes even challenging third parties my criticism for third parties this goes for greens and libertarians you literally you 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 literally crapped the bed in 2016 you had a golden opportunity lightning in the bottle to some extent, the libertarians have done fairly better. I'm impressed with their ability to get ballot access and also what the Illinois Libertarian Party was able to do in 2022, which is not an easy thing to do. All right. But if they don't, if there's a debate between RFK Jr. and Trump at, at their event on May 25th and they don't have a nominee up there, I'm sorry. You guys deserve to be dragged through the coals. I mean, a one time thing, possibly. I don't think it's going to happen. And you don't have one of your people there to debate those other two at your event. Fuck out of here. That's even more humiliating than the Greens venues, even shrinking more and more and more. I mean, it's you got you got you, you got you got to take the hits. So, you know, Andy, look, you've been a great friend of the show and, and a good ally. So what, what are some of the things that you guys are working on right now for INN? I mean, obviously, this article. Probably is going to be triggering a lot of people, but I know Indie News as a whole team, you guys have been really hitting the ground hard, especially standing up against the censorship. So what are you guys working on and how can people help you guys out? Well, of course, you know, Jesse Jett, who you, yep. uh, and I, we, we, we really appreciate how much, you know, I, I host Jesse's show, American Tradition on INN. It's a music show. We don't, it's a little bit political in that the music is political, but um, really, it's just us hanging out and him playing tunes and reading his spoken word pieces, playing some covers occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight, actually, at 1030, I'm going to run a clip show from American Tradition. We've been doing this every every um, Friday night at 1030 Eastern, having a good time. And literally, it's all meat and, and no filler. So it's just the spoken word pieces and songs for about an hour and a half or so. And uh, and we all have a good time in chat. Um, of course, you've got Tara Reed as a member of, of INN. We've been supporting and, we and producing Tara Reed's podcast. She'll be live with Nick Sortor, independent journalist, at 2 p.m. today, uh, Eastern, all Eastern. Angel, God, you know, Angel's in the chat. Angel wasn't wasn't even recording videos or anything. He's streaming two shows a week now. Right? Go He's got Angel in, the, Angel in the afternoon tonight at 7 where he talks about politics and, and culture stuff and, and current issues of the day. And then tomorrow night with... Black Magic Talk podcast in the in the chat, Miss Witchy Perfect. They do pro wrestling talk at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. Check that out again. All at IndieNews.network. We're on all the different platforms. So proud of everyone uh, that, that comes together. 11 p.m. tomorrow night will be Snow Himbo, and he's doing gaming. He's playing like the Termiturge or something like that. It's all it's right. some old old school game. Everyone's having fun, and then of course Sunday night. That's that's my show with Reef, and Reef's in chat too. That's how do we miss that and then boats smashing in other boats where we do Reddit React, similar to like how you do Chicago React. And uh, how do we miss that? We read stories from independent journalists. Chicago uh, React. We thank, thank you for the name drop. <laughs> uh, you, you got it. You're welcome, Daniel. I love you. Much love. Much love to 99 Perspectives. Look, don't forget that I also publish the Hardlands Substack just about every day of the week for you guys when, when we go live. Subscribe there, hardlandsmedia.substack.com. I'm publishing every day. Well, now I, I, I missed that INN News, which has had over 100 episodes themselves every Wednesday right. night for over two years. Reef and Colin host that. And then last night we had Politically Homeless with uh, Big Mad Crab and Snow Himbo. That's a great time, too. Um, a bunch of different variety, a bunch of different personalities, a bunch of different perspectives. We all share resources. We all pool ideas and, and we share, you know, go as guests on each other's shows. And, and we support and amplify each other. And, and we need that in this space. 
Absolutely, dude. Listen, Indy, I, I'm I'm just first of all, number one, I have a request. I gotta get Jesse Jet back on the show. May, not this weekend, unfortunately. I'm I'm pretty tied up with a lot of other projects, but maybe we can get him on for next weekend because he's been kicking ass and taking names. And it's long overdue. We get we get we bring him back or else. So oh, um, Jesse's uh, going to New York City, by the way. Oh yeah, new that's right. For new dissidents. That's absolutely correct. He's gonna do a lot of shows. Uh, he's going to be also, I think Jose Vega is going to be there for due dissidence. I got to get those guys Correct. back on the show too. I want to make sure that, uh, give a little bit of a shout out to their live production. That's going to be happening there. So folks, listen, Indy, I'm very grateful for you being on the show and more importantly, talking about this article, uh, this video will be clipped folks. And yes, I'll be sharing with our can TV audience as well, because now more than ever, uh, we need to start promoting and sharing each other's work. And I know that Indie News Network is one of the dauntless few, and that's why I want to give them a full salute. So, Indy, thank you so much for your time. And, you know, more importantly, buddy, uh, just keep on pushing forward. And I support everyone at INN because they stood with Hard Lens Media. So I remember who my friends are. Thanks, my brother. All right. No problem, bro. All right, folks. We're going to be continuing with the rest of our show. Get ready for that high school drama. AOC versus MTG. <laughs> Land of the free, and you'll know us by the trail of death. It's just one more world war to complete the set. When you live by the pike, you die by the pith. You die wide-eyed, still pleading the fifth, or crying divine epithets and pathetic attempts at defense. All empathetic for those on your side of the fence. Well, I'll gladly put you and your legacy into an alternate tense of faltering senses and altered events. Like Hunt, it ain't a hearse, it's a reaper stretch. Ah, how sweet, she said, bunch of hordes in the street like it's evil dead. Where the thin blue line meets razor's edge. And where the corporate ladder ascends to a steel-toed boot that awaits on the ledge. You'll be licking it fresh at your boss's request till it stomps each finger and watches you fall to your death. And drown in an ocean of debt. Gone with the fodder who gathered to honor the patient left Who purity tested themselves into section step by step Till the next election when it's just one them And the sound of their well-read theorized breath That's harm reduction for the lowly cost of you Holding your nose and just openly buying the theft Maybe that's all in the flick of the pen Maybe we're all one unmarked van from a trip to the pen Being guarded by pigs who exist on a diet Of dying breaths of much worthier men Honey, heaven's expecting you. Just don't get too hung up on who they let in. Just look up at the shine of the pearly gates. You don't need to worry if there's lead in the paint. You don't need to worry if there's lead in the water, lead in the milk, lead in the honey, lead in the caustic embrace of the heavenly father. Lead is the flavor of passive perpetual slaughter. Lead is the taste of us led to the ledge by the lure of the legend of expert consensus. And then beckon to stretch it just one step farther. And I hope all the folks who were boastfully gloating and toasting themselves as the heroes of COVID for boosting their boosters and doing their part are now equally thrilled to be starstruck martyrs. All laid in a government grave with anonymous markers, like you're back from the carvers and off to the splicer. You're the very first wave to be slain in the war against Pfizer. That hundred years war against Pfizer. They are thinning the crowd that is striking right now to bleed adequate pay from those inhuman misers. Who all sit in their office and designate coffins to people regarded as nothing but profit for Kaiser. Still the Dems want you nicer. Dems want you softer. Dems want you kinder. Yeah, they all want you graciously starving in silence. You will speak when you're spoken to. Rest of the time, you and all of us peasants are merely depressing statistics neglected in Congress's binders. All bled, bone dry, then fed to the grinder. Our headstones lie in each step as reminders. That's a lesson in object permanence learned in the furnace by workers consigned to the fire. Workers bled, bone dry, then fed by the fed to the grinder. by the
that to the grinder. Now the fat went straight to your head. Mind what you hide and your size unsad. And your eyes turn blind to the signs unread. Flag bright red, so you let it in bed. You let it inside, you'll see that it's fed. Never you'll mind that it grinds your wealth into bread for itself. Then it bleeds you dry, and it dines on the dead. Now the fat went straight to your head. Mind what you hide and your size unsaid. And your eyes turn blind to the signs unread. Flag bright red, so you let it in bed. You let it inside, you'll see that it's fed. Never you mind that it grinds your wealth into bread for itself that it bleeds you dry then it dines on the dead and the fat runs straight to your head mind what you hide and your size unsaid and your eyes turn blind to the signs unread flag bright red so you let it in bed you let it inside you'll see that it's fed never you mind that it grinds your wealth into bread for itself bleeds you dry then it dines on the dead the fat went straight to your head Mind what you hide and your signs unsaid And your eyes turn blind to the signs on her head Flag bright red so you let it in bed You let it inside and you'll see that it's fed Never you mind that it grinds your wealth Into bread for itself and it bleeds you dry Then it dines on the dead Here's where our leaders would see us all led Here's where our leaders would see us all led Here's where our leaders would see us all led Here's where our leaders would see us all led. The fat went straight to your head. Mind what you hide and your signs unsaid. And your eyes turn blind with the signs on red. Black, bright, red, so you let it in bed. You let it inside and you'll see that it's fed. Never you mind that it grinds your wealth in the bread from itself. And it bleeds you dry that it dies on the dead. The fat went straight to your head. Mind what you hide and your signs unsaid. And your eyes turn blind with the signs on red. Black, bright, red, so you let it in bed. You let it inside and you'll see that it's fed. Never you mind that it grinds your mind, that it grinds yourself, and it bleeds you dry, that it dies to the dead. Here's where our leaders would see us all led. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl.